reconvene regular meeting number 51. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Dear God, tonight, as we gather to conduct the business of the city of Columbus, we pause in reflection and tribute to those who have lost, who we have lost in the past days and weeks. We remember not only community and national leaders like Miss Jerry Mock, whose memory and inspired legacy we honor tonight at council but also the untold many in our community who go to their eternal rest having been loving mothers and fathers, devoted grandparents, active member, members of their communities. Dear God, we pray tonight for the victims of global violence and hunger, and we ask your mercy especially uh, for the people and families who are suffering from the Ebola virus. God, we ask that you watch over our brothers and sisters around the world, just as we ask your guidance and protection for our own families and friends. Finally, we ask that you bless all members of the Columbus City Council, present and future, with the wisdom and the courage to serve this community to their absolute best of their abilities. All of this we ask in thy holy name. Amen. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. The first item of business for council this evening is the appointment of a new member of Columbus City Council to fill the vacated seat of Council President Pro Tem A. Troy Miller. I would ask the city clerk to read the resignation letter from former President Pro Tem Miller into the record at this time. Letter to, directed to Andrew Ginther, President of Council, dated August 28, 2014. Dear President Ginther, I am writing to you today to formally announce and inform you of my resignation from my position as a member of Columbus City Council. Please consider this letter my official notification. My last day as a council member will be the 26th of September, 2014. This was not an easy decision on my part. I have enjoyed working as a council member and especially working with a team of elected officials and directors dedicated to doing the business of the residents of Columbus. I wish to take this opportunity to thank you and all of my other colleagues for your guidance and cooperation in handling all my committee assignments. I would also like to thank you personally for putting your trust in me and appointing me to head the various committees of this wonderful council. I wish you and all the elected officials the best, and I do hope our paths cross again in the future. Sincerely, A. Troy Miller, President Pro Tem of Council. 
Thank you, uh, Clerk Blevins. Uh, before we ask for nominations uh, to fill the vacancy from council members, I would like to acknowledge all the applicants and those that have come and interviewed with council uh, over the last uh, couple of days. It probably seems like weeks to some of you uh, and all the meetings with members. Uh, we had an outstanding, uh, an outstanding group of citizens who step forward to offer up uh, their service to our beloved city and on behalf of this council uh, and on behalf of the city and all of our great neighborhoods I want to thank each and every one of you for having uh, the courage and the commitment uh, to put yourself forward as a candidate. Colleagues any other comments uh, regarding the applicants for the process? Councilmember Craig. Uh, thank you, President Gitter. I want to uh, personally convey my thanks uh, and commend all of those uh, who submitted their applications regarding this council vacancy. We observe those with extraordinary skills uh, and commitment to service, and I should say, and I know John Avanic doesn't want me to say, but, and that's not hyperbole, but I certainly want to thank uh, Thank you for your thoughtfulness and your consideration and insights of both the, cha the challenges and the opportunities uh, to move our, our city forward. Our neighborhoods, our communities, and our city are better because of your engagement and your participation. And I would just simply suggest to all, please keep going. God bless you, and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Craig. Uh, Councilmember Klein. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I'd like to echo some of the remarks already mentioned by you, Council President, as well as uh, Councilmember Craig. Uh, this is a tough decision, and it takes a lot to put yourself out there in the public eye to want to serve uh, this community. Uh, in any capacity, let alone as an elected official. Uh, and the one thing that I gleaned from this process was how fortunate we are as a city to have so many talented individuals that are willing to stick their neck out on the line and want to serve uh, their city as an elected official, as a member of the city council. Uh, we're, just, we're just very lucky. That's all there is to it. Uh, so thank you to all of the applicants that uh, chose to apply, and I encourage you wholeheartedly uh, to continue your service, whether it's uh, through council or as a neighborhood leader or a community leader, because your talents are needed to continue the success of this city. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Member Klein. Any uh, additional comments? Council Member Tyson. Thank you, President Ginther. Um, I had the opportunity to to interview the majority of the candidates that applied. Um, anyone that said, you know, we called each and every person and asked them if they wanted to come in and interview and share their thoughts. And so um, I feel very privileged that I had that honor to meet most of the candidates that applied for this position. And just want the, the community to know that, that these were some amazing people that have decided that they wanted to continue to move our city forward in such an, an amazing way. And my hope would be that, um, you know, it's, you know we have, we're going to have one position and we had 20 some people apply for it. It's a difficult decision, but I had hope that each of you will continue to want to move the city forward. For those of you who absolutely know that you want to be in elected capacity, that you continue to do the work that will allow you to be able to do, to be able to be, to move forward in being an elected official. So thank you for sharing with us um, what works well in the city and what kinds of things that we need to improve our city, because we will certainly be reading those documents and, and identifying ways that continue to move our city forward. So. Don't look at this as not winning, you're all winners. And just want to say thank you for putting your name forward and wanting to work for the, the best city in America. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Tyson. Uh, Council Member Paley. I echo everything that's been said and just 
and just extend an invitation for any of the applicants. I know that I was sick during the time of a lot of the interviews, and so I did not have the opportunity to meet every single applicant, but I'm extending that invitation to anyone that I did or did not meet that wants to be involved in the city in some way to call my office and set up a meeting to discuss what you're doing now or what you want to do in the future because in my opinion you all care about the city as much as I do and I'm more than happy to help facilitate all this energy that's sitting in this room and those that are not so um, please utilize the invitation call my office and and let me see what I can do to help you move forward thank you thank you uh, council member Paley council member Mills my comments are both to the applicants and to my colleagues. This was a difficult process. Um, service is certainly the call, but courage is the answer. And it is certainly remarkable to see the best and brightest of Columbus to be so courageous. Uh, service requires that of each and every one of us. And I am very proud of the number of people who answered the call of service with the courage that they did to put themselves forward. So I wanna say thank you to all of those who answered the call of service. And to my colleagues' um, process and comments, thoughtfulness and intentionality of what you put forth during this difficult decision is to be commended. And I want to make sure that the public understands the challenges that this caucus faced in picking among the best and brightest in our city. And they did so with care, concern, and compassion for the citizens. And for that, I'm thankful and proud to serve with all of my colleagues. Thank you, uh, Council Member Mills. This time, I would ask for a nomination to fill the vacancy as member of Columbus City Council. I, Councilmember Paley, move that Shannon Harden be appointed to fill the vacancy. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any other nominations uh, from council members? See none. Clerk, call the roll by voice. Craig? Yes. Klein? Yes. Mills? Yes. Paley? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? Yes. Uh, please join me in uh, congratulating council member Shannon Harden. Council Member uh, Hardin will have a public swearing in ceremony, which we'll announce uh, separately at a later date. I would entertain a motion to recess regular meeting number 51 for That's 10 so minutes. Moved. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. We will reconvene in 10 minutes. May I have a motion to reconvene regular meeting number 51? So, so moved. Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not at this time. Are there any resolutions or announcements from members of council? Council Member Craig. Uh, thank you, President Ginther. Uh, I I was looking to see if I saw folks from the City Leaders Academy. Uh, anybody here in the audience? But certainly wanted to recognize uh, the young people involved with that extremely important initiative. Uh, in 2012, uh, Mayor Michael B. Well, the Mayor Michael B. Coleman uh, developed a uh, substantive leadership initiative for middle school children ages six through eight. Uh, sit the City Leaders Academy introduces young people to uh, some of the people and places that, make, that makes Columbus a great place to live. The program is designed to educate and ignite the middle school youth 
to become model citizens and eventually become leaders of our great city. The City Leaders Academy is, is uh, held September through May uh, on the third Saturday of each month. And uh, if they um, come a little later in council, council, member, uh, council President Ginther, I'd like to be able to recognize them formally. Uh, also, uh, the Westgate Recreation Center dedication ceremony uh, is Thursday, October the 16th at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, and that will be at 455 South Westgate Avenue. Uh, please join uh, Mayor Coleman and I will also be present uh, and community, community leaders for the dedication of the newly renovated Westgate Community Center uh, in the Hilltop community. The $5.5 million renovation update, uh, updated in the 1950s Air Center and adds additional programming space. Um, immediately following the ceremony, staff will be on hand for tours of the building and program uh, demonstrations. Uh, Director McKnight, any comments? Chairman Craig, Council President Ginther, uh, members of Council, uh, I think you covered everything. We're just excited about getting the center reopened and uh, looking forward to great programs out in the hilltop and hopefully uh, all of you can come out and join us that evening. Thank you for your work and certainly your staff and all of the community and their input. Uh, it is much needed and, and we're excited about uh, the new renovation uh, at the Westgate Center. Uh, finally is the fall harvest jammery at uh, Smith Farms. And there's a wonderful quote here. Uh, what's all the buzz about the farm? Uh, join us on Saturday, October the 11th from uh, 12 o'clock p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. for a uh, corn maze, children's farm games, art activities, uh, country, food country food sales, uh, one pumpkin per child. Uh, it's $2 the climbing wall, $5 har uh, the horseback riding, and much more. Smith Farms, Three Creeks Park at 3285. Watkins Road, um, and uh, the admission is free, and the parking is $5. Certainly encourage uh, families and children to participate in this wonderful event. Thank you. That is all that I have. Thank you, uh, Council Member Craig. Council Member Klein? Yes, Council President. 168X 2014 to declare the week of October 5th through 11th, 2014 to be Fire Prevention Week in Columbus, Ohio. I'd like to move for passage. Second. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley, Tyson, President Ginther. Welcome, my friends from Fire. I'd just like to note just one statistic from 2011 about Fire 370,000 structures in the U.S. burnt down. Uh, that contributed to 13,910 civilian injuries, 2,520 deaths, and $7 billion in damage. Yes. So yes. How important is fire prevention, Lieutenant? Yeah, that's uh, national statistics. Uh, some of those statistics have gone up even in the year of 2013 and so far in 2014. That's a bad trend that we're setting. Uh, nationally, there are 3,000 or almost 3,200 deaths this past 2013. So this is a very important week for us. Uh, you spoke very well. Uh, thank you, President Ginther. Thank you, Councilman Klein, for this resolution. And again, you spoke very well on the issues of fire safety. Um, one of the things I really like to add, though, is I need the community to understand that this fire is a risk that can happen to them. We've had some very significant events over the past 30 days in the city of Columbus with fire-related incidents. So I need you to apply the knowledge that I'm giving you, the fire safety education information that I'm giving you, so that you can change your behavior that may mitigate fatalities and injuries from these types of risk. Okay. So on behalf of Fire Chief Gregory Paxton and the members of the Columbus Division of Fire, thank you again for this 2014 resolution and all the support that the City Council has given us in the past. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, any questions or comments? Appreciate it, Lieutenant Sawyer. Thank you so much for coming down. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Klein. Councilmember Mills? 
Councilmember Paley. I have a couple of resolutions this evening. At this time, I would like to invite to the podium the Short North Alliance Executive Director, Betsy Pandora, and any gallery owners she has invited to council, just Betsy, to accept resolution 0167X 2014. And this resolution celebrates the 30th anniversary of the gallery hop the monthly gathering that helped revitalize the Short North and has since become a nationally recognized event that draws thousands to the streets of Columbus on the first Saturday of every month. Betsy, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Council Member Paley and all members of Council. It's such an honor for us to receive this resolution from you tonight. As you know, Gallery Hop is an incredible event for the Short North Arts District. It's played such a role in shaping our community, and we're so proud of all that it's achieved over its last 30 years. So thanks so much for recognizing us uh, for what was our special day this past Saturday. Council Member Tyson. Thank you, um, Councilmember Paley and Betsy. Just want to say congratulations to you. Certainly, the 30 years of the Gallery Hop um, is in key to the revitalization of the Short North. And so, just want to say thank you for your leadership. As um, you know, you've taken the reins think two years ago almost. almost. And uh, just thank you for the work that you're doing to make sure that businesses are continue to grow and thrive because of the Gallery Hop restaurants restaurants, including those businesses, have great people coming in and, and dining in their facilities. So thank you for what you're doing to continue to improve the short north community thank, and, and this city, because it certainly is a tourism attraction for our city. So thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Mills. I just wanted to say thank you. And one of the things that struck me uh, this weekend at Gallery Hot was almost everyone I talked to was not from the city of Columbus, and they came to the city just to attend gallery hop it was just really nice to see that it's, it's drawing in visitors as well as bringing out residents and i talked to a lot of people because i could talk to lamp posts right but <laughs> i talked to a lot and uh, almost everyone i talked to whether they were in line at, at jenny's or at the three dog bakery mm -hmm. everyone i talked to was from somewhere else and they had come to town just to um, experience gallery hop so that is a, a tribute to you and all of the gallery owners and all the great folks in the short north so thank you thank you Before I move for passage, I do want to um, remind everybody, and I'm sure I'll remind you again to not f forget about Highball Halloween in the Short North, which is coming up. And if you haven't um, been to the fashion couture show at Highball Halloween, you really ought to take advantage of the situation. With that said, I move for passage. Craig Klein, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. And next, I would like to invite Chris Crozad and Gloria McCauley to the podium to accept resolution 0172X 2014 to honor and recognize the 2014 Legacy Fund honorees. I will first move for adoption. Craig Klein, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Chris Crozad and Gloria McCauley have shared their time, talent, energy, guidance, and leadership with a variety of organizations in their 32 years together. For the past 18 years, the primary focus of their work has been the Buckeye Region Anti-Violence Organization, Bravo. The pair founded Bravo in 1996, and Macaulay still serves as the executive director and COZAD as the president emerita of the board. Bravo serves the entire state of Ohio. Its mission is to eliminate violence perpetrated on the basis of sexual orientation and or gender identification, domestic violence and sexual, thought through, sexual assault through prevention, education, advocacy, violence documentation, and survivor services both within and on behalf of the LGBT community. Macaulay and Kozad first stepped into activism in the early 1880s during the first days of the AIDS epidemic. Faced with the death of many friends and a new ban on gay men donating blood, 
They spearheaded a local chapter of Blood Sisters, a group dedicated to encouraging lesbians to give blood in honor of gay men who couldn't. As this year's Legacy Fund honorees, we are excited to commend and celebrate <coughs> both Chris and Gloria as unyielding champions of the LGBT equality in education. This honor is well deserved as they have traveled extensively in Ohio and around the country providing training, technical assistance, and consultation to the communities, organizations, conferences, law enforcement agencies, and service providers. In addition, they have also consulted with the CDC, FBI, and the Department of Justice and the White House on violence issues. <clears throat> As a result of their work with the National Coalition of Anti-Violence Programs, both have served on the board of the NCAVP. Chris and Gloria, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Councilman Paley, President Ginther, members of council. It's an honor to be here, and it is an honor to accept this year's Legacy Honors Award. Um, I guess that I, we uh, share what we call the justice gene. And when we see something is uh, amiss or wrong, we can't help but correct it. So that has really been the guiding principle of our lives together these last 32 years. And uh, we're happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Paley, thanks for bringing this uh, amazing and outstanding couple uh, before us to recognize uh, tonight. Uh, families and children are safer in this community uh, because of your work, your advocacy, and commitment to uh, making sure that they have a brighter future ahead of them. So thank you for your advocacy, thank you for your service, and congratulations on this award. Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, Councilman Paley. Chris and Gloria, again, I'm going to say congratulations to you and thank you for this service to our community. And also just want to say thank you for, I know that you've opened up your home to so many individuals to make sure that they were going to have a safe place to lay their heads down. And I, I just know that, you know, from just knowing you two. And just so congratulations on this award, but also for what you've done for so many individuals who... Um, didn't have a place to go because we still have more work to do around issues of domestic violence when we're looking at the GLBT community. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Councilmember Craig. Uh, Chris and Gloria, let me also congratulate you. And the truth is violence against anybody is unacceptable. And thank you so much for your long-term uh, commitment uh, to, to our community. Thank you. That's all I have this evening, President Ginther. Thank you, uh, Council Member Paley. Council Member Tyson. Thank you, <clears throat> President Ginther. I don't have a resolution, but I do want to recognize our esteemed auditor, Auditor Hugh Dorian, for being the, Nas the National Management Associations. He's now in the Hall of Fame Award. He received this award on the 27th of September um, of the, this year at high noon and at the Hyatt Regency in Miami, Florida. And he got this award for his outstanding, being an outstanding public servant. He's a Columbus Economic Development Leader. He is an investment portfolio pioneer. He is recognized nationally for his professional integrity and, and inspiring ethical behavior. So congratulations, Mr. Dorian, on being the 2014 Hall of Fame Award. Congratulations to you. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member uh, Tyson. Tonight I have uh, Resolution 0165X-2014 to honor and recognize the 35th Nationwide Children's Hospital Columbus 
marathon and half marathon on Sunday, October 19th. I'd like to invite uh, race director Darius Blackford to the podium to accept the resolution. First of all, move for adoption. Second. Clerk call the roll. Craig Klein, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Resolution adopted. The Columbus Marathon was the 17th largest marathon in the United States last year. And over the past two years, the event has raised more than $2 million for Nationwide Children's Hospital. This year, the Nationwide Children's Hospital Columbus Marathon has another sold out field of 18,000 runners, walkers, and wheelchair participates in the marathon and half marathon. Participants will be raising funds for the Nationwide Children's Hospital with the Columbus Marathon once again pledging a $100,000 match. Mr. Blackford, uh, thank you for being here tonight and thank you for everything that you're doing in the city. Would you like to make any comments? Thank you, Council President Ginther and members of council. Um, I'm humbled to stand here. For 35 years, this event has done such a good job of conveying positive um, spirit and sportsmanship for the city and to see what it's become and to be part of that now. This is my fifth year as director. I'm just, I'm so humbled and honored. And now with our partnership with the hospital, we're entering our third year and we're gonna surpass our million dollars again this year. And uh, it's just, it's a phenomenal opportunity. I know through the grapevine that uh, you're taking part this year. And although there was some fine print in the um, new councilman um, Hardin's uh, Agree. You could have uh, passed it on to him. I, I noticed you, uh, you, you've let that go. But uh, seriously, we are so, I can't even stress how important this event has become for the uh, marathoning uh, around the country. And we have a great reputation because of all the people who have uh, been involved over the years. So thank you for this honor. And we're going to continue the streak and uh, make it great. I finished my last long training run yesterday, so I'm moving a little slower today than I was uh, <laughs> yesterday. But any uh, comments uh, regarding this? Thank you again, Mr. Blackford, for everything you do. Thank you. And I know that uh, on our agenda this evening is a memorial resolution that we will be forwarding to the Mock family. Um, as Councilmember Craig mentioned in the prayer to begin the service this evening, we lost uh, one of Columbus's giants uh, since we were last together, and that is uh, Jerry Mock. And so we celebrate the, the spirit of Columbus that... Uh, uh, all the recognition that she went a good part of her life without receiving, uh, it's only right that we recognize and celebrate the amazing example she set, not just for women, but for adventurers uh, throughout the world. So uh, I uh, appreciate uh, Council's recognition of that, and we will be sending forth uh, acknowledgement to the Mock family. Any comments from our elected officials, city auditor, city attorney? This, uh, at this point, I request that the following ordinances be removed. Do we have any to remove? Yes, we have in recreation and parks. Uh, I request that uh, 2307-2014 uh, be removed from the consent agenda. Any other requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance or resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, we may, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk? So moved. Is there a second? Clerk call the roll. Craig Klein, Mills Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading. Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinance 2162-2014, Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 1976, 2013, 2093, 2159, and 2161-2014, Public Service and Transportation Committee, 
Ordinances 2207, 2208, 2219-2014, Development Committee, Ordinances 2188, 2216-2014, and Rules and Reference Committee, Ordinance 2937-2013. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda for first reading? On the consent agenda this evening, we have Resolution 171X, 174X-2014, Finance Committee, Ordinance 2136-2014, Recreation and Parks Committee, Ordinances 2059, 2164, 2170-2014, Public Safety and Judiciary Committee, Ordinances 2105, 2107, 2151, 2157 2014. Public Utilities Committee, Ordinances 1953, 1974, 2054, 2077, 2124, 2172 2014. Public Service and Transportation Committee, Ordinances 1704, 2045, 2156, 2192, 2209, 2214 2014. Small and Minority Business Development Committee, Ordinances 2194 and 2196-2014, Development Committee, Ordinances 2183, 2218, 2229, 2230, 2232 2014 Environment Committee, Ordinance 2174-2014, and Administration Committee, Ordinance 2095-2014. Thank you, uh, Clerk Blevins. We do have one speaker on the consent agenda this evening, uh, Nathaniel Wilkins. Mr. Wilkins, welcome to Council Chambers. If you'd make your way to the podium, share your name, address, any organizations you represent, and I believe you've signed up to speak in support of 2183-2014. Lathania George Wilkins, 1612 Arlington Avenue, Chairman of Solely Vacant and Abandonment Property in North Linden area. Um, my this main concern here for for um, demolition structures, and um, I'm all for it, but the the concern here that I have here is all these poor structures are in the neighborhood, the neighborhood. And um, they sit idolized from years after years. Um, also, that's including burnt structures and poor condition of houses. Um, such as 1606. Even though the windows are remaining open on the second floor, we have other property like this in the Linden area that's the upstairs windows are open. Um, just to identify that with you as at uh, 1603 of Genesee Avenue, it's the same thing that's going to happen with this same house, such as 1606 of Genesee Avenue. Windows just open on the side on both of these sides of the house. And, you know, houses are getting damaged by the weather wise from year after year. Snow, rain, whatever may the case may be. But again, I'm all for it. But the community that people live in, we are surrounded by this problem of vacant property and poor structures. So uh, again, some of this stuff is, do have to come down in a timely fashion. So thank you for your time. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wilkins, for uh, coming and sharing your thoughts on the consent agenda this evening. Any uh, questions or comments for Mr. Wilkins? If not, uh, can I have a motion to um, consider these items as consent actions? Second. Move. Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll by voice. Craig? Yes. Klein? Mills? Paley? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? 
Uh, yes, consent agenda carries. We now proceed with the second reading of 30-day table in the emergency legislation. Uh, the first committee is the Finance Committee. Council Member Tyson chairs that committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you. The first ordinance I have is 2079-2014. It's to authorize the Finance and Management Director on behalf of the Office of Construction Management to modify the contract with DLZ Ohio Inc. for professional services for the compressed natural gas infrastructure located at 50 5115 Crager Court to authorize expenditure of $683,862.45 from the Fleet Management Bond Fund and to declare an emergency. This CNG station will have a design similar to the recently completed CNG station at 2333 Morse Road, but will also dispense diesel and unleaded fuel necessary for the different various city operations. DLZ will provide site assessments, construction documents, and construction administration for the new fueling station. Provisions for this modification were already approved in the original legislation, which is Ordinance 1733 of 2012, passed by City Council July 19th of 2012. So it is practical and cost-effective for coordination and, continue, continue at, and to continue to modify this contract with DLZ. I think it's important to know that when we are um, constructing, like, kinds of like deep, like the CNG station that we do want to have similar stations throughout our city and this will be our third CNG station it's on the west side and so it really isn't feasible to use a different company when we're doing basically the same uh, it's the same type of facility and so um, so that's why DLZ, why this contract is being modified. Also, this location is really close to our Georgesville Road um, refuse transfer facility, so it'll be very convenient for um, our trucks. And as you know, most of our trucks, we are we are moving, we're purchasing more um, CNG um, vehicles, so um, so that we will allow them to use domestic and less expensive and greener fuel. So this is really important as we continue to making sure. I think Council Member um, Council Member Mills will be appreciative of this based for the Environmental Committee. So that's why this is so important. Additionally, I think Council Member Craig, Council Member Klein will appreciate that also by having this facility here. We're looking at our fire station. Um, 31 is really is nearby the station. And once this new station is open, the fueling for Station 31 um, will be eliminated. And it's going to be eliminated at that station because Station 31 has a very high ground water table and the tanks are 26 to 28 years old. So by them being able to use this facility, that will also be um, very positive for that particular fire station. And so with that, I would um, move for passage. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. My next ordinance is 2190-2014. It is to amend the 2014 capital improvement budget to author <clears throat> excuse me, to authorize the city auditor to transfer funds between projects with in the Construction Management Capital Improvement Fund to authorize the Finance and Management Director to modify a contract with Schooley Codwell Associates for professional architectural and engineering services for the new 11, 111 Front, Front Street building to authorize the expenditure of $1.2 million from the Construction Management Capital Fund and to declare an emergency. The goal of our 111 Front Street project is to, is to develop and enhance the cohesiveness, functionality, and accessibility of our City Hall campus. So the, the reason for this modification is that we're going to now have a new garage. Um, the garage will infill a full city block that has been long, long vacated with, a, with an open surface parking lot. And design elements will be used to tie the 111 North Street building to this. Now, we, we passed this initial, initial legislation for um, our new facility. We were also saying we're having a smaller underground garage was included in those initial plans. However, a larger garage, which this $1.2 million is for, is needed to accommodate staff and visitors for, for the three departments that will be housed in the building. 
development, public service, and building and zoning. Now the land, the surface lot that we're going to build this garage on is a lot that the BWC, it was a BWC lot. So now the BWC will also have Bureau's work, Bureau of Workers Comp will have an op, will also be parking in this garage. So this new garage will have 700 parking spaces. 100 of those spaces will be um, reserved for BWC and there'll be 600 parking spaces for our city employees, customers, and pool vehicles. So with, with this new parking lot, with um, we will now have um, on this campus 1,075 parking stalls for, again, the individuals that I just mentioned. Schooly Codwell and Associates is in the, was in the process of completing the base design for this, for 111. And so um, it would not be prudent for us to select another firm for the parking garage. And also, um, when we... To bring a new design firm will now cause unnecessary delays and duplication. And prices already established in the contract and negotiation of additional fees were used to determine the cost of this modification. This facility will also be adjacent to City Hall campus where elected office holds and other agencies are located, enhancing access, convenience, and this will be a one-stop shop for this, with this facility in this garage. There is a potential for retail services on the ground level, and the pro this project further demonstrates city, the city's commitment to also our downtown development, and also jobs for the building of the, of the garage. And so with that, I would like to move for passage. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. And last in finance is ordinance number 2235-2014, and it's to authorize the issuance of special obligation bonds in the amount not to exceed $248,235,000 for the purpose of providing funds to refund certain outstanding special obligation bonds of the city, section 55B of the city charter. These are revenue bonds for sanitary and sewer that were issued in 2008 during the economic downturn and, the, and our long-term bond, bonds, which aren't due until 2032. The bonds were issued at market rate, and now that the market has improved, the bonds can be refinanced at a lower rate. The auditor and the finance have looked at the market and projecting that we can potentially save about five to six million dollars by refinancing them and we're looking to re to finance again between 150 to 175 million dollars but it just depends on um, the market and um, we certainly leave that to our esteemed auditor mr. Dorian to make that decision but we but again we have bonds worth 248 million and we want to we'll make he'll make the decision with his team as to um, what we will refinance mr. Dorian do you have any other comments to make uh, Chairperson uh, Tyson, no, you well stated. Uh, we always ask for the maximum amount that we see possible, and the market will dictate to us what the actual amount will be, probably in the neighborhood of 150 to $175 million if I were to do it today. But please support the ordinance, and I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Doyle. I move for passage. I move to waive second reading. Craig Klein Mills, Peely Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Craig Klein Mills, Peely Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you, and lastly, I know I don't have any, um, there's no legislation in health, but I would ask Dr. Long if she would please make some, a few comments regarding Ebola, and um, she's prepared to do that. Dr. Long. Good evening, um, Council President Ginther, Council Chair Tyson, uh, members of Council. I could go on, but I don't think you really want me to. Um, clearly, um, our world, I believe, is captivated by this concerning infection. According to the World Health Organization, uh, we've now got nearly 7,500 persons um, who have already contracted Ebola, and it has a very high mortality rate. I know that's obviously of great concern. Um, it's clear that this virus is transmitted um, through contact with blood, body fluids, secretions, um, which is actually good news um, because 
because there could be other routes of transmission, very easily airborne transmission that would cause us even more concern, or people are not able to um, transmit this virus unless they indeed have symptoms, which again, for many infectious diseases is not the case. So there's a couple of good things um, so far. But clearly last week, uh, when the United States confirmed its first case of Ebola, um, it clearly has capt captivated our nation. And sadly, I'm not sure if you've heard the news, but Spain this afternoon um, announced their first case that was actually acquired in Spain um, for a nursing assistant who was providing care for two missionaries who had returned um, from working in one of the, the most affected West African nations. So indeed, Ebola can be scary, um, but clearly there's a difference, um, a world of difference really between the United States and some of the challenges that are really being faced where Ebola is being spread so, so rapidly in West Africa. Um, there's no doubt in the United States and in our region that we have a strong health care system. We have public health, we have a sufficiently or at least a much larger number of public health professionals who again are going to be very committed to seeing that again everyone receives the highest quality of care available, but also that we are working very hard on, uh, or would be working very hard on the investigation, the trying to stop uh, any spread, any transmission in its tracks. So yes, the investigative work that's going on in Dallas right now, um, and really there by local, state, and, and federal agents, um, agencies is really a core public health function. You know we do this around mumps and measles, um, syphilis, all things that have been in our news. Um, so again, this work is different. Obviously, we're very concerned about this Ebola virus and what it may mean, obviously, both in Africa and in other nations, obviously ours as well. But again, I do believe that the public health and the health care infrastructure in the United States is very different than in the most effective uh, affected countries in West Africa. Um, clearly, we are very hard at work providing information and guidance, um, both to our own staff, but clearly to our health systems partners, our EMS partners. We've had multiple briefings last week. Um, we are continuing the, in those. We'll be meeting um, more with some of our key partners, both within the city, um, but in our community that are all focused on what would be our metropolitan medical response. As some of you know, we have a, a very large group focused on the metropolitan medical response right here in Columbus and Franklin County. Um, so again, we're fielding lots of questions, concerned questions. Um, we are in the process of trying to reach out to some um, in our community who are feeling very concerned about this. So again, we will continue in that process. I'd be happy to keep you updated, but again, we have no um, cases. There was actually a rumor that was spreading over the weekend and even today about there being a case that is not true uh, here in Columbus or Central Ohio, or at least not that any of us know about. Um, so I will not, will not confirm that rumor. So again, I'd be happy, but again, if you have questions, but I want to assure you that we are preparing. Um, we are working with both within the city, but clearly across our community. Um, but there's a lot of work to do. Thank you for that update. And certainly, um, periodically, there's um, continue to update our, not only this body, but also obviously the residents of our community. Thank you so much. That's all I have, President Ginther. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Tyson. Um, Councilmember Craig, there's some legislation from Recreation and Parks that we took from consent agenda. Will you bring that forward for consideration? I certainly would do so, sir. Where is that, Andrew? Page uh, six. I think it was 2307 2014. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, it is 2307 2014 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to grant consent 
to the Columbus Blue Jackets Foundation to apply for permission to sell alcoholic beverages uh, at the Columbus Blue Jackets opening night plaza party and to declare an emergency. Uh, direct before we move for discussion, Are we going to abstain this? Okay, I see that. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to move to table indefinitely. And um, I'm going to request a voice vote. Clerk, call the roll by voice. Craig? Yes. Klein? Yes. Mills? Paley? Yes. Tyson? Yes. President Ginther? Yes, tabled indefinitely. I uh, thank you. I believe that is all the legislation that uh, will be moving forward tonight in recreation and parks. Thank you, uh, Chairman Craig. Our next committee is the Public Safety and Judiciary Committee. Councilmember Klein chairs that committee. Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Ginther. Uh, three pieces in public safety tonight. Uh, the first two have to do with OVI. Uh, draw, you know, operating uh, a vehicle under the influence. And I'd like to, to give the opportunity to uh, Deputy Director Gian Gardella to talk about these two pieces. President Ginther, Chairman Klein, members of council, uh, these are uh, two uh, grants that we get through the state of Ohio, uh, typically for uh, OVI enforcement. Uh, um, and uh, this year, um, the state did separate out these two uh, particular grants, um, one for actually the OVI, the other for impaired driving. So obviously a, a higher emphasis now um, on impaired driving. Um, combined, we're going to get about $280,000, I said, uh, these are reimbursement grants. And uh, police will use these during uh, uh, peak times on our interstate highway system and also on our some of our major arterial roads. Um, obviously, the objective here is to reduce crashes, reduce uh, um, injury, and reduce property damage. And I appreciate Council's consideration of these two ordinances this evening. Thank you, sir. Uh, the first piece is 2150-2014 to authorize the Director of Public Safety to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Traffic Safety Office, State of Ohio, to participate in the Impaired Driving Enforcement Program for fiscal year 15, to authorize an appropriation of $60,446.61 from the unappropriated balance of the General Government Grant Fund to the Division of Police to cover the costs associated with this project and to declare an emergency. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Next is 2152-2014, to authorize the Director of Public Safety to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Traffic Safety Office, State of Ohio, to participate in the OVI Task Force, uh, fiscal year 15, to authorize an appropriation of $221,738.39 from the unappropriated balance of the General Government Grant Fund to the Division of Police to cover the costs associated with this task force and to declare an emergency. Any questions or comments on this particular piece of legislation? I move for passage. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Finally, 2202-2014, to authorize and direct the city attorney to settle the case of Elizabeth Cellini versus the city of Columbus, pending before the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas, to appropriate $175,000 from the unappropriated balance of the street construction maintenance and repair fund to authorize the expenditure of $175,000 and to declare an emergency. City attorney. Uh, Mr. Chairman, President Ginther, members of council, uh, this is an allegation that the city of Columbus negligently was negligent in keeping South High Street in proper repair and free of obstacles. In February of 2013, an individual named Elizabeth Cellini was standing on the southeast corner of South High Street and Mound Street. If you'll recall, a lot of these cross sections had these brick uh, crosswalks. Well, as she stood there, a CODA bus went by, kicked up a loose brick, and hit her in the forehead, creating permanent damage to her and, and significant medical expenses. Uh, she now has a permanent indentation in her forehead as a result of this. Upon examination of the evidence, we believe we could not prove that we kept the street in repair as we should have, and therefore believe that we could not fight liability. The plaintiff asked for $250,000 in conversations with the Department of Public 
service. We believed and they agreed that $175,000 would be a fair and just settlement, and we'd ask the council to concur in this agreement and pass this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, City Attorney Pfeiffer. Any questions for the City Attorney? Seeing none, I move for passage. Craig Clay Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. That's all I have in safety. Thank you, uh, Council Member Klein. Our next committee is the Development Committee. Council Member Mills chairs that committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Ginther. Tonight in development, I have the following ordinances beginning with Ordinance 2181 2014 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to enter into a contract for the purchase of one skid steer loader from Bobcat Enterprises, Inc., for use by the Department of Development, Division of Code Enforcement's Environmental Blight Abatement Section, to authorize the expenditure of $49,495.89 from the Community Development Block Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. The environmental blight abatement section will be able to demolish small structures which are owned by the land bank, which will serve the Department of Development and save them both time and resources. The Department of Development recommends the award be made to Bobcat Enterprises as the lowest, responsive, responsible, and best bidder. If there are no comments or questions, I'd like to move for passage. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Next, I have Ordinance 2197-2014 to amend the 2014 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the City Auditor to transfer cash and appropriation within a Northland and other acquisitions fund to authorize the Director of the Department of Recreation and Parks Department to enter into contract on behalf of the Department of Development with Covington Iron Works LLC doing business as Stewart Iron Works for the fabrication and installation of nine art bike racks to authorize expenditure of up to $77,849 from the Northland and other acquisitions fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, we introduced this um, concept of designing the bikes for public art purposes and for um, purposes to storing bikes at our nine rec centers. There was a whole contest around design and, and now we're moving forward and looking forward to seeing them there. If there are no comments or questions, I'd like to move for passage. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. That's all I have in Department of Development this evening. I had two announcements. I wanted to uh, share from uh, education standpoint, four Columbus City School seniors were recently named National Merit Commended Scholars by the National Achievement Program. Um, the group uh, recognized three additional students as outstanding participants in the National Merit Scholarship Program. The four commended scholars are students at Centennial High School, Columbus Alternative High School, and all our seniors. And they were recognized for the exceptional academic promise that was demonstrated by their performance in placing among the top 5% on the qualifying tests. And additionally, there were some stu three students awarded as outstanding participants, which were all seniors at Columbus area, Columbus Alternative High School. That's all I have. Thank you, uh, Council Member Mills. Our next committee is the Administration Committee. Council Member Paley chairs that committee. Madam Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council, Pre Council President Ginther and the Administration. This evening we have Ordinance 2187-2014 to establish a new authorized strength ordinance for various divisions in the City of Columbus to be consistent with the adopted 2014 budget to repeal Ordinance 1306, 2014, and to declare an emergency. At this point, I would move and request to table indefinitely. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Tabled uh, indefinitely. Thank you. That's all we have in the Administration Committee. Thank you, uh, Council Member Paley. Any. Uh, Anything else to come before council this evening? We do have a number of non-agenda speakers. Uh, I think we will reconvene for uh, zoning at 6.30, and then I believe we have seven non-agenda speakers that we will take after uh, 
the zoning committee legislation. We will reconvene at uh, 630 for zoning. Stand adjourned. Regular meeting number 52 will now come to order. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? So moved. Is there a second? Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you. Are there any communications and reports received by the city clerk? No, there are not. Any first readings of 30-day legislation? No, there are not. We will now go to the zoning committee. I am chairing the zoning committee. All members serve on the committee. This evening in uh, zoning, we have 2165-2014 to rezone 1516 North High Street, 43201, being 7.34 plus minus acres, located on the east side of North High Street, between East 9th and East 8th Avenues, and on the south side of East 8th Avenue between Pearl and uh, Section Alleys, uh, accepting there from parcels number 010 037288 and 010 003633 from R4 residential ARO apartment office and C4 commercial districts to CPD commercial plan development district and to declare an emergency the applicant is Campus Partners for Community Urban Redevelopment, care of John P. Kennedy and Michael T. Shannon, attorneys, Crab Brown and James, LLP, 500 South Front Street, Suite 1200, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. The proposed use is mixed use development. The University Area Commission recommended approval. The University Area Review Board recommended approval. The City Department's recommendation is approval. The Development Commission recommended approval 5-0 on September 11th, 2014. If there aren't any comments or questions, first I uh, move to amend to emergency. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Amended to emergency. Now move for passage. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Passed. Thank you. Next is 2166-2014 to grant a variance from the provisions of section 3356-03C4 permitted uses and 3356-0.05C C4 district development limitations of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 1516 North High Street 43201 to permit first floor residential and supporting residential uses and residential uses above certain commercial uses that are otherwise prohibited in the CPD commercial plan development district and to declare an emergency. The applicant is Campus Partners for Community Urban Redevelopment, care of John P. Kennedy and Michael T. Shannon. Attorneys, Crab Brown and James, LLP, 500 South Front Street, Suite 1200, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. The proposed use is mixed use development. The University Area Commission recommended approval. The University Area Review Board recommended approval. The City Department's recommendation is approval. Any questions or comments from council members? First, I amend, uh, move to amend to emergency. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Amended to emergency. Second, move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein, Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Thank you very much. Passed. 1092-2014 to uh, grant a variance from the provisions of section 3332.03 R1, residential district of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 7801 Olentangy River Road, 43235, to permit limited C2 office commercial district uses in the R1 residential district and to repeal ordinance 912 dash eight four passed June 4 1984 the applicant is dr. Chris Smiley care of Jackson B Reynolds attorney Smith and Hale 37 West Broad Street suite 460 Columbus Ohio 43215 the proposed use is limited C2 office commercial district uses the city department's recommendation is uh, approval 
First of all, I'd like to uh, move to take from the table. Second, to uh, amend. Uh, I'm sorry, moved and seconded. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Taken from the table. Uh, would like to move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Amended as submitted to the clerk. And I don't believe we have any speakers. Move for passage. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. Passed. There's nothing else to come before the zoning committee this evening to entertain a motion to adjourn. Clerk, call the roll. Craig Klein Mills, Paley Tyson, President Ginther. We stand adjourned. Um, we will take non-agenda speakers momentarily.